a particular butterfly, the brown hair streak, which some of you might have seen on a brief broadcast I did this morning. I found on Horsenden Hill, the neighbouring site to where I am now in Perville Wood, a bit earlier, um, and was quite excited to find it. It's a species that was known to be there. We'll talk about how it was known to be there in a minute. But it was a species that was known to occur on that site, but it's not one I've ever seen before as an adult butterfly. So I was very happy to find it, and obviously very happy to find it on my own site. So the picture here is one of the pictures I took earlier today. It's not perfectly sharp if you were to really zoom in on it, but hopefully you can get the impression of what this butterfly is. It's a medium-sized butterfly, I'd say, with, in the case of this one, a female, uh, bright orange hind wings, dark forewings with an orange sort of band or patch across them. And yeah, that's that's what we found. So I thought we'd talk about this butterfly a little bit. It's a butterfly that's probably better described as being scarce and hard to see rather than particularly rare. It's not a very common species, but it's not very uncommon, but it is quite challenging to see. And it's a species that's declined quite significantly in Britain. There's been about a 49% negative distribution trend since the 1970s, according to some analysis of the data that's been done by Butterfly Conservation. So this is clearly a species that is having some problems and is not doing necessarily very well. It's a species that is, uh, as if, well, we talk about being hard to find, I mentioned being hard to find. It's in the Lysenidae, which is the group of butterflies that includes the blues and the other hair streaks and the coppers. And it is, at least of the hair streak butterflies in Britain, it's the largest of our hair streak butterflies. It's somewhat larger than several of the others that we could find. Um, and we'll have a quick look at pictures of the one I saw today. So there's one of the pictures. Let me bring up another picture of the one I saw today and make that the main image for a moment. So these are just a couple of pictures I took of it today. The first picture, I'll put the first picture I've got, is where I first picked it up and it was just, it just flew in and sat on a piece of grass here. Um, looked a bit other as it, as it flew, it looked, it didn't quite look right for the other brownish, orangey coloured butterflies I'd expect to see flying in the grass. So I stopped to have a look at it and this is what it was. It flew around a bit and then it made its way into the hedge line and onto some blackthorn, which is what the second picture is showing. And that's about where it was when I did the broadcast earlier, where we at least hopefully got a brief look of it, look at it in situ. But I thought I'd hop back on here, do a little bit more, show a couple of the pictures and, and talk a little bit about what this butterfly is. So as I say, this one is a female. Let me just take myself off the screen for a moment, if I can do that, that get rid of me. And I will bring up a couple of other images of a female from the collection here at Perryville Wood. So I quickly went through and read the digital version of the collection. And that's quite a useful thing to have access to because it allows us to see these butterflies and see them in a way that you wouldn't be able to see them in the real world. And these are two specimens, or possibly the same specimen upside down. I think they're two separate specimens uh, that, were, that are in our collection here at Perryville Wood of a female. Let me take off my pictures. So these two are the female of the butterfly, and as you can see, it's got this very 
on the on the left you've got the upper wings and they're brown but the the forewing has got this orange splotchy patchy blob in the middle of it and the hind wing is this orangey color with these cross lines and these bright white lines which are sort of the origins of the name, the vernacular name hair streak but the male of this butterfly let me put a couple of males up looks a bit different so now you've got the female on the left and you've got the male off on the right again specimens from the collection and the male has much less going on in the wings uh, much duller coloration so there is that bit of difference between them and the one well, I say the one we saw today which I put back up now was a female I don't know how many pictures perhaps is going to let me have on screen at one but it's a female and as you can see it's got that orange color and it's got that orange patch in the center of the wing so that's what we had today let me take the voucher specimens off now the collection specimens let's remove them from the screen and come back to the two images of the brown hair streak that we saw earlier so i said this is a butterfly that's perhaps a bit scarce and is difficult to see and part of the reason that it's difficult to see is that they tend to breed at quite low densities in any particular site and over a relatively large area although maybe favoring particular spots in that area so you may well when they emerge only have one or two butterflies of this species per sort of kilometer of the relevant the blackthorn hedge lines that they've laid their eggs on so you can imagine that makes them quite difficult to find and to, to, to see and it also makes it quite difficult for the butterflies themselves to find each other if there's only one or two of you in every kilometer and you're looking for someone you know a butterfly of the other sex to mate with and there's not many about and they're little things that's going to be quite a challenge so one of the behaviors that this species has is it uses what are called master trees and these tend to be a particular tree in the area quite often an ash tree but not always and quite often a very tall tree standing perhaps in a lower lying bit of the site and what will happen is that the males will spend pretty much their entire life up in the top of that tree not really doing much occasionally flying but being really really hard to see probably staying up there a lot of the time and feeding on honeydew although perhaps very occasionally coming down and visiting flowers at ground level and taking some nectar there but that makes the males very difficult to see the females which is what we found are a bit easier to see they do spend a fair chunk of their time up in that master tree with the males so again they will because the, there's something about those trees that the butterflies want the females sort of know where to go to find the males the males wait there and they may well spend six ten days something like that up there whilst their eggs mature mating and so on but then particularly on a sunny day nice sunny conditions typically temperatures above 20 degrees centigrade the females will come down they'll feed on nectar on plants lower down and they will try to find somewhere to lay their eggs which is probably what this one was doing the butterfly off to the right had gone into blackthorn which is the food plant or one of the food plants and was finding somewhere to lay her eggs i suspect so the food plant of this species the larval food plant that is the thing the caterpillars feed on the plant it lays its eggs on in britain is mainly blackthorn which is prunus spinosa it's a plant in 
well, the genus Prunus, which is plums and cherries and things like that. And it's a fairly common plant in lots of, like, lots of parts of the country, um, which again makes it interesting that this butterfly is much more local in its distribution. The plant it's caterpillar speed on is pretty common, the butterfly much less so. So there's obviously some other things required for its habitat to, to establish where it can live. But as well as, as blackthorn, as well as prunus spinosa, it is also known that it feeds, occasionally it's been recorded feeding on a plant called bullus, which is prunus domestica insticia, insticia possibly, one of those names anyway. Um, another genus, another plant in prunus, another plant in that genus, but they will sometimes feed on that, and they have been known to feed on that. But the main food plant here in Britain for for this species is the black thorn. It's a species that um, has an association with ants, as a lot of species in the, in the same day do, in this group of butterflies. Some of them quite famously actually needing the ants and indeed being predatory on the ants. This, this species isn't, but it's known in captivity that the final instar, the instar caterpillar, the, the caterpillar when it's fully grown as a caterpillar is highly attractive to ants. Ants will attend it, ants will come and visit it. Although I'm not aware there's been any documented evidence of ants interacting with the caterpillar in nature, in, in, in the, as an external observation. So that association is there. It may well happen, but it's not known. But what is known is the pupa is attended to by ants. So the pupa of this species is looked after by, well, looked after is probably the wrong word, but attracts ants. It makes a sort of chirping noises, which attracts the ants. It has ants around it, which means that the ants are presumably providing it some protection by them being able to sting and so on from all the things that could want to eat it. So that's this species, that's the brown hair streak. And I say, I was very happy to find this, but we didn't know it was on site. And one of the interesting things about this butterfly is that often the best way to survey for it, the best way to know if it's around somewhere is not to look for these adults, not to try and find these adults, because as we talked about, they can be very difficult, the males basically sit at the top of their trees and never come down. The females spend most of the time at the top of that tree and rarely come down, but then do something to come down to lay their eggs and you can see them. But often a good way to survey for these is to go and look for the eggs. Now butterflies are not big. Let's, let's bring up an image of the eggs of this species. And let's change it that way around so that the eggs are the biggest. So this is one of the things that was done by some colleagues from the local branch of butterfly conservation over the past few years. They came and visited the site and they spent many, many hours carefully looking at the blackthorn bushes and looking at essentially where bits of the twigs join one another. Spending cold days in winter doing this when there aren't any leaves and you can find the little white eggs of the brown hair streak. So we had for several years had people find these eggs. I tried on multiple occasions and failed but I just I don't think I've got my my eyes into the search image for these eggs yet. But we knew there were, the butterfly was here because the egg, which is quite distinctive in its shape and pattern and color and what plant it's on, had been found for several years. So I was sort of hoping I'd find the butterfly that I did. But it was 
a good thing to do. I was very happy when I found this. Let me take the egg off. And let's have one picture of the butterfly. So there we go. I just thought since the broadcast I did earlier when we were in the field and looking for this was rushed and unprepared because I wasn't expecting to see it, I thought I'd hop back on this evening, give a, a few more facts, a little bit more context on this butterfly. It is, I think, a really attractive species. I was, as I say, extremely happy to find it. And it is really rather a gorgeous thing. And I was hoping that the weather tomorrow is nice and sunny and I'll probably spend quite a chunk of time working around Horsenden Hill where I found this, seeing if I can find any more, seeing if I can get any sense of where, if there is one, the master tree where the males live, the males are spending their time is, and if we can work that out, that would be really interesting because those trees tend to be the same from year to year and that will give us a lot more information. So I will spend a fair chunk of time doing that tomorrow, I suspect. If I'm successful and get good views of it, I might well hop back on here and perhaps and show you another broadcast of them. Just depend on how, how things go. But that, I think, will do for now. It's a nice butterfly, a nice find. And hopefully when I get these pictures off the camera and process them properly, some of them will be worth hanging on to. So there we go, we'll end there with those pictures of brown hair streak and we'll just make this one the absolute top star image and we'll end on that broadcast there, we'll end the broadcast there just showing that brown hair streak and hoping very much that I will find some more of them tomorrow.